uh, yeah, this guy, he, it was in front of this building, had a bunch of lights and this kind of big burly guy dressed in all black. Uh, he just came up to us and he was like, hey, uh, are you all 18? We are like, oh, yeah, sure, 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 we're 18. Because, I mean, we're, we're dressing like khakis and like a button down. I don't know why we're dressed so nice, but we just baby face. We don't look 18, but we were like, yeah, 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 we are. And he handed us a uh, ticket. Hey, guys. I'm Hugh Corciani, joined by Chris Corciani. And this is the Corch Pod. So, uh, I'm also your father. He's also my father, uh, you know, friend yeah. at certain at certain points in time. At but that's uh, correct. Yeah. yeah, we got some uh, some sports topics, and we're excited to talk about them. It's been a minute, so tell me uh, what you've been doing today. Today I was working, okay. uh, you know, out hustling around. Uh, then I met with uh, Ben Broussard, okay. the uh, new head of the uh, NC State Wolfpack Club, taking over for a legend. Bobby Purcell was there for. 30 years, did a wonderful job, and I uh, had an opportunity to meet Ben today. And um, He's excited to be here. He's from New Orleans. Okay. A lot of the people, uh, okay. that Uncle Gabe knows, uh, my brother, uh, mom, and sister all live in New Orleans. So we were talking about some of the places out there and the food and the culture. And I said, it's not a different state. It's a different world. Shout out to uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah. Alfred Payne came from there as well. That's right. Players. That's right. We saw him. We saw him mm -hmm. at the uh, Dale, uh, where NC State practiced at one time. I didn't know who he was, and he had to tell him. Yeah, and that's actually a really good segue because he was training with TJ Warren. That's and right. That's a big story right now. TJ Warren dropped fifty three points, I believe, on my uh, on my Sixers. Yeah, Not a good night. I, I didn't know his last name was Warren. I thought it was Buckets. Oh, TJ Tony Buckets. Buckets. Yeah, Tony Buckets. That was that was fun to, to be able to kind of finally get a chance to see basketball. Mm -hmm. And TJ came out and dropped 53, uh, 20 of 28. That's that's the beauty of TJ Warren is the way he gets it. Super efficient score. Super efficient. was 9 of 12 from threes, 20 for 28. Mm -hmm. Just lets it come to him. He's not one of these high volume guys that needs 45 shots to get 53 points. But the uh, that was quite exciting. And, you know, the funny, if, if you think about it around the NBA and all the cities and, and the whole United States, TJ Warren's really not a household name. You yeah. know, we know him here in North Carolina because he was a great player at NC State. But uh, he, he's been a very efficient, good player, but he was on some teams that weren't that good. Now he's with the Pacers. Yeah, well, the Suns traded him to the Pacers for cash. So yeah, just that's a pretty good deal for the Pacers. Yeah, they steal. And they've got an opportunity to make some noise in the playoffs as well. But mm -hmm. uh, happy to see TJ really get put on a map with 50-plus. Uh, yeah, I remember when he was playing at State, he used to tell me I was, I was just a youngin' at the time. You still and are young. Still, still young, still, still young learning, you know, yeah. learning the ropes. Yeah. But he told me, just watch this guy. He, he'll never take a bad shot. and. That's, that's a fact. It, it was amazing. He, he's one of those guys that just kind of feels the game, knows where the ball's going, you know, great offensive rebounder. He knows angles. Um, and then when he shoots the ball, when his ball hits the rim, it's like a magnet. It'll mm -hmm. bounce, it'll bounce. When I played, my ball hit the rim. It never went in. TJ's the opposite. When it hits the rim, it's just soft, goes down. But uh, he was a tremendous scorer for NC State. Just loved the way he played the game. Yeah, very uh, kind of bittersweet moment when he when he dropped off against my team, but you know, all the power to him. And the Sixers, Sixers need to get it going. You know, yeah, yeah, we had a little uh, same game. We had the kind of little controversy with uh, Shake Milton and Joel Embiid. They yeah. kind of got into it. A little, a little beef, a little beef, didn't that? Yeah. yeah, Shake Milton wasn't doing too well. Joel my Embiid man, my main man, man, my favorite player in the NBA, TJ McConnell, came up and swooped up. He's uh, with the Indiana Pacers, used to be with the Sixers. Just a, uh, love the way he plays game. Yeah, he's, you've got some comparisons to him. So I have. Uh, maybe that's Charles, why. Charles Barkley threw out, or was it Shaq? Uh, either or. Shaq threw out, threw out something. But anyways, yeah. that was uh, a while back. All right, so uh, staying on the topic of the NBA, we got Lou Will. That's a funny story. <laughs> Lou Will, uh, he left the bubble with some other uh, players as well. We're leaving the bubble for you know family related reasons i think that was the original uh kind of reason why he left because yeah. he was going to atlanta that's where he's from i believe and uh he actually got caught a rapper was at a uh 
at a Atlanta strip club, Magic oh, City, oh. put it on a story, said uh, something about you never expect to who'd be here. It was Lou Will. But he was there for the chicken wings, though. I yeah, mean, he, he said he said he wasn't there. He was hungry. I mean, dogs, give the guy a break. He, he was hungry. He wanted, wanted some chicken wings. Yeah, and, uh, you know, obviously everybody's been talking about it. It's, it's pretty funny, the yeah. chicken wings. Well, wing the funny thing, I, I, read it, I read an article about Lou Williams kind of outside the bubble going to this adult entertainment type place. And mm. one of the, the, on the menu, the chicken wings are named after him. <laughs> they're called the Lou Williams. Yeah, I've, I've heard a few. I've, I've heard a few rumors that he's, he's pretty uh, famous in in the uh, the Magic City oh, yeah. realm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, people were calling him, you know, just names like uh, Lou Lou Wings or like uh, oh, lemon nice. pepper Lou, like <laughs> stuff like that. But I did hear uh, also from my my insider source that the wings are are very good. Have uh, you ever uh, have you ever been to Magic City or any? Any places like this, this gentlemen's clubs? This is on video. I mean, this, this is live. This, this, this yeah, is. Uh, I asked the hard um, questions. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I have been to some of those establishments um, mm -hmm. for bachelor parties and, and things of that nature. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan because, and I, I've said this a million times. I work extremely hard for the money that I make, okay. and, and I don't want to give it away. Um, to those type of people. I'd rather give it to someone on the street, to charity, or to buy you shoes and hats and stuff like that. So so I'm not a big fan yeah. uh, of those type of places. I never have been. Uh, have you? Not, uh, have you ever been there now that um, you put me on the spot? <laughs> I can't say I have. I do have one story. Hold on um, a second. You can or can't? I, I have a story. I have a story. Have you been to one of those? Uh, let me let me oh, explain. I'll reach me across explain. that table. So, uh, me being, you know, I'm 16, just want yeah. to put that out there. Yeah. So, legally, probably legally cannot go into one. Sure. But uh, I was in Miami one time. A lot, a lot with, goes uh, on in Miami that, 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 that yeah, <laughs> that's your, your, yeah. your home city. Yeah. I was with my friend Charles Denning and Drake Marshall. Shout out to them. I know they're watching this. But uh, yeah, we were, we were going down the, the, uh, the Miami Strip. And this guy, we were just walking, minding our own business. Probably like a little late in the uh, in the night. We probably should be uh, home I sleeping. Didn't I give you a curfew? Yeah, it was, it was uh, around twelve. Around right, twelve. Okay. And uh, yeah, this guy, he it was in front of this building, had a bunch of lights, and this kind of big burly guy dressed in all black. Uh, he just came up to us, and he was like, "Hey, uh, are you all eighteen? We're like, oh yeah, sure, 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 we're eighteen. Because I mean, we're we're dressing like khakis and like a button down. I don't know why we're dressed so nice, but we just baby face. We don't look eighteen, but we were like, yeah, 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 we are. And he handed us a a ticket, and then I I started to notice. I was like, this this is probably a strip club, because I saw like uh, this this kind of never told me this story. This, this woman uh, kind of you know I don't I don't shame not fully kind of oversized. Yeah, yeah. Now she was an oversized woman yeah. in a throne, but the building wasn't getting any business. It was kind of shady looking. So I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. My friend got this uh, this ticket. It said two for one lap dances. Oh my gosh! So we get one lap dance, get the Stop other one free. Stop it! Get out of here! Yeah. And my two of my friends. Hate to put them in the spotlight like this, but they wanted to go. They were all for it. They said, "Let's go. This could be such a cool like experience. It could be fun." <laughs> put on the Snapchat stories, and they were kind of giving me. They were kind of giving me. And I'm in charge. I'm, I'm in charge. Yeah, you were just at, at the <laughs> boat or something, but I was like, "Dang, this could be good for the Snapchat story." That was the only reason I was just you know considering it. Oh, but then I just I you know my my wits were about me. Uh, thankfully, so yeah. I said no. There was no one going in and out of that place. It was probably going to just kidnap us. Right. Like human you, trafficking. You, type did, you did the right thing. Yeah, I, I had to convince yeah. him. My friend Charles Denning, I had to convince him uh, a little more than Drake. But, yeah, yeah. Well, we let's, got let, let's get back Let's get back and talk a little bit of sports. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, how about the bubble? What's your thoughts on the NBA bubble? Um, I like it. I've I've seen my uh, my homie, Matisse Theibel, on the Sixers. He's put out some, some blogs uh, video blogs, if you don't yeah. know the term, uh, about the bubble, life inside of it. And uh, they, it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. They have activities they do. It's It kind of is just like a big summer camp. I mean, yeah. I know you've compared it to uh, an AAU tournament or a, a 
or like a basketball summer camp. It is in, in, in many ways like that. Right. Well, I think the, there's a couple of different things. You talk about the basketball aspect of it. You know, you're there almost watching games, mm -hmm. stretching out. You're seeing teams when they leave the floor. I mean, there's a lot of things that you normally wouldn't see. You know, there's games all throughout the day, which is very unusual. I saw where one team was kind of stretching out, watching while the other team was playing. It's just different yeah, it things like that. Very odd to see. Yeah, and uh, then you talk about the, the living quarters and uh, all these folks together. And, and it'd be really, really fun to see what the NBA is spending on this because you're you're not just talking about the players. You're talking about the people that are preparing food and the workers and the everybody has to stay in that bubble. So it's not like you're the, the maid service, they don't get to go home. They're there as well. So it's just what they've done is amazing to be able to pull it off. And then when you contrast that to the problems that Major League Baseball is having. Wow, yeah. They've uh They've had some 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 controversies about the uh, players getting COVID. You know, players and staff. Mm -hmm. I believe the Marlins. Uh, they had some players who were withholding information. They s think they had Corona and they still wanted to play. Right, they wanted to play. It's, and then uh, you know that well, kind of messed my, my and, Phillies and, up. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Our Phillies start start out one and two. Mm -hmm. Played the Marlins and one of their a couple of their staffers. The Philly staffers got it along with the Marlins, who they played in a three-game series, they're postponed for a week. Yeah. So you, you just wonder how long Major League Baseball can go on um, if every time people contract COVID, they're, they're going to stop. Yeah, it's now we're seeing the Cardinals. Some Cardinals players are getting this. Saw that so. today, yeah. And it's, it's difficult because for baseball, they're traveling to the different stadiums. It's not like a one set location. Right, huh? but they're also going home. You know what I'm saying they're going oh, home yeah. to their families and their kids, and you know they're in the general public. And um, you know if they think they're going to be able to continue the season, you know, with that without the bubble, it's it's not going to work. It's going to be very interesting how long they go before they pull the plug. You know, mm -hmm. if you think of uh, right on the horizon, we've got college football. It's the same thing. I don't. I just don't see. What's your feelings on that? Yeah, I was just about to say, you know, if you ask me, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I can't see it happening. I mean, you were talking uh, maybe a couple of weeks earlier about there's only going to be a select few amount of people at each game, maybe like 2,000. And even at that time, I was thinking, no way. They're probably just going to, you know, play no people. Now it's looking like they're not going to play at all. A lot of uh, conferences have canceled their games. Some yep. conferences are canceling their, uh, their out-of-conference games. It's not looking good for you. Well, you got the other problem too in college. You've got these their kids, and they're they're going to go out. They're going to be around their friends. They're going to mm -hmm. go to parties. You just aren't going to be able to control that. Now all of a sudden, your star quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, let's just say, he's a married team, man, so he's not going to go party. Well, he's going to be out eating dinner out somewhere, yeah, being yeah, around yeah. people. All of a sudden, he comes down with COVID. He's got to sit out two weeks. Well. Two weeks in football is you know twenty percent of the season, so now yeah. they're at a disadvantage. And I, I just think that that when it's all said and done, I'll be very surprised, in my opinion, if they end up playing college football. I just don't see how they're going to do it. Then, if that domino falls, the other question is, how do all the non-revenue sports that are supposed to play in the spring, how are they going to be funded? Because that's where all the dollars come from, is football, yeah. and then to a lesser degree, they come from basketball. But that's mm -hmm. that's the money that supports all the non revenue sports. And what you've seen, a lot of the mid to lower level Division One schools, they had to cancel cancel the non revenue. Exactly. I saw Stanford cut a bunch of sports out. Yeah, even here mm -hmm. locally. Uh, ECU in Greenville, mm -hmm. yeah, they cut a. I want to say it was uh, 10, 12 sports or something like that. But sad is tragic. Yeah, well, it's just going to be. It's it's almost like once one domino falls, it leads you to a whole other mess. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, but that's right. I mean, gosh, that's that's within you know a month. They're going to have to make some hard decisions on on what they end up doing. And um, schools are starting. though NC State starting practice, I believe, tomorrow. 
and um, you know they're going to get tested. And what happens if there's an outbreak? It's it's just going to be real interesting. We've never we've never dealt with this as a country, let alone dealing with it on the the, the sports level. Mm -hmm. And you see some that are working, like the NBA and, and hockey as a bubble as well. They seem to deal doing extremely well. But you can't do that. You can't put these college athletes in a bubble. You know, just it, it, it's too hard to do. It's too hard, yeah. And then it brings it brings you to what do you think about NFL football? You know, what are they gonna do? I saw Odell was uh he was getting interviewed today, I think about that. He said it's uh he wants it to happen, but he, I think he's saying it's it's probably not likely. Yeah. I do have but, to I have to do say one thing that's really cool and, and I saw this last night watching the Rockets play. Um, the Bucks. The Bucks. Is they had the fans that were, you know, it, it looked like they were in the in their seats, but they were actual virtual fans that were on video. Mm -hmm. So when the Rockets scored or wherever the home team, they started clapping. I it was amazed that you know I'm not that smart a guy. So when I see something like that, it, don't laugh. You're you, supposed to say, "Dad, you are." You can join the Zoom call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, you're capable. Right. I actually did see some uh, some ex NBA players. I, Dwayne Wade, I believe, was in uh, a video call. Chris Bosh, uh, Paul Pierce, saw a lot of uh, ex guys. Right, but what I'm saying is the fans. That yeah, they yeah, had, yeah, They were actual. So virtual. So when, right. So when they scored, they were clapping. Yeah, well, they're joining a video uh, call right. or something like that. Well, I've got my first Zoom call. I feel uh, real tech savvy. Wednesday with uh, Tom Gugliotta and okay. Rodney Monroe. What is and, this uh, pertaining to? Um, the Wolfpack Club okay. has asked us to do a Zoom call for some boosters, and Jeff Gravely uh, is going to host it. He's just going to ask us different questions of when we were playing or what it was like. And mm -hmm. um, I talked to him briefly today, and he said, you know, how often do you guys stay in touch? I said, every single day. Uh, Rodney Monroe, who I played with four years at NC State, as you know, um, sends a prayer to both Tom and I every day. And, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every day we, we get a text with mm -hmm. a prayer, and then we'll chime back in. And you know, is he uh, is he still coaching at uh, what is it, yeah. Huntersville? It's uh, I think it's Lake Christian. Lake Christian, or it's a Christian school in Huntersville, mm -hmm. and just a super super great guy. And uh, so we stay in touch all the time. But we're just going to chop it up, talk about different things, and. Um, and it should be fun, but that'll be my first Zoom call. So I'm kind of excited to say that I'm, I'm finally okay. I'm finally zooming. You're zooming. You're zooming. <laughs> and I don't know if they use that terminology. Oh, is that? Okay. You're, you're zooming for sure. Okay, Boomer. All right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this guy. All right. Let's. Uh, you talked about the NHL a little bit. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Shout out my guy. I give a lot of shout outs on podcasts, but shout out Grace and Brain, biggest Hurricanes fan I know. They're 2 0. 2 0. They're today. rolling. Yeah. We're rolling. They're I don't watch rolling. it that much, yeah. but we're yeah. rolling. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. It's exciting. How, how are they doing the bubble? Is it uh, they're going from uh, which one, uh, arena to arena? Yeah, huh? yeah well, it's the same. I'm very similar to the to the uh, the NBA. NBA. It's kind of oh. interesting where, where in hockey they went right to the playoffs. So we're, yeah. we're playing, I want to say it's the Rangers. And so we're up 2-0 uh, in that. It's an it's, uh, interesting format. But mm -hmm. uh, a little different how the NBA is kind of playing. I believe it's 60 games and then going to the playoffs. But uh, the Canes are back. I'm a Caney. Canes are back, baby. It's it's going to be interesting to do. Obviously, we're 2-0, so possibly no problem. But that atmosphere. Ah, tell me about that. Arena, yeah. It's it's hosting PNC Arena the the home games, but I've uh, just I've never heard that arena be that I'm, loud. It's I've, crazy. I've been, I've been I had to cover my ears at yeah, one point. Well, I'm a little bit older, and I've been to a few more sporting events. Yeah, I've never been to a sporting event that was that loud. Hugo and I went to given uh, the the playoffs though. Yeah, oh, it was the playoffs. Yeah, and, and um, we went to a couple of those playoff uh, games place was electric i mean it really was uh, i mean i've been the carolina state games carolina duke games mm -hmm. i've been to some uh big playoff games world series games in philly to me nothing has compared to the to that level of excitement and the energy uh that the pnc had when it came from making the uh, playoff push yeah it was it was truly something else yeah so 
Obviously, they're doing well towel, without. You're doing the, yeah, we're doing, doing the towel. towel the it was it was crazy. <laughs> it was the craziest thing I've, I've ever seen. Yeah, he didn't. Sporting. He didn't know. He thought there was like four quarters. I had to explain to him there was only three periods and stuff like that. But I, I knew my yeah. hockey to a certain extent. Ray, you know, Grayson, I'm you know, gonna get him quarters, right. I'm gonna get him right, Grayson. You know, three quarters. You know, they do the the drop, dropping the puck, dropping yeah. the puck. Is it a ball they play with or a puck? Uh, I believe it's a puck. It's I think a puck. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a puck. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Gotta gotta watch a few more games. Uh, 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 how many players are on the ice from each team? I want to say, ooh, this is a hard eight or eleven. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you, oh wow! Okay. I want to say, I want to say seven. I want to say there's seven. Three, okay. three on. I don't know. Our hockey, our, the hockey fans in the uh, in the comment section yeah. will let us know. But well, I'm, I'm a Kaniac. I'm a big Kaniac fan, but I don't know how many. I'm people leaning are. towards nine. I'm gonna say yeah. nine. I don't know. I'm gonna go I'm under. Going under. One, I'm two, going three, under four, nine. Five, six. Three, four, five, six. There seven. could be seven. I don't know. Because you're thinking wingers. Well, forward. I don't so know. There's always one in the penalty box, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always one. No, no. Power, power play would be. I think power. there's nine. I think there's nine. I think that's too many. You think nine so? Nine per time. Oh, yeah, that could be. I think it's like three on defense and three on offense. Oh, no. And then you got a goalie. Mirzak, I don't know why I just thought about Mirzak this. Mirzak is a nice goalie. Hey, do you, remember, do you remember the. Uh, was it last year when they had the uh, rescue goalie? Oh, came yeah, in? yeah, yeah. That was crazy. It was a filling goalie. He was actually Phil. contracted to the other team. Yeah. I believe it was the Blackhawks, Chicago I Blackhawks. I who it was. But uh, he came in and made some stops, and they, they ended up winning. That was crazy. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to get on that. Hopefully, stuff. we're not making anybody cringe with our hockey knowledge. But Well, we, we love the sport. We're learning the sport. We're learning. There's nothing wrong with that. We're, we're still learning. 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 But, uh, Mm-hmm. I have a I have a hundred and eighty two dollar hurricane jersey. I went to my uh, hockey slight game. flex right yeah. there. Well, what ended up happening was um, I went to a game and I was coming from Charlotte. And it was okay. a playoff game, and I had you know a, a golf shirt on, and I got there and I was so out of place. Everybody had those hockey jerseys on. Mm-hmm. So at the first intermission, I ran. I had I had to be I had to fit in. I went there, got one of these jerseys. It said Justin Williams. It was Justin Williams oh, jersey. Okay, okay. I pulled out like a hundred dollars. I thought it was gonna be like seventy dollars or something. It was one hundred and eighty-two. Well, was it signed or something? No, but that's how much they go for. Dang, but they are I'm, pretty heavy duty. Yeah, they're heavy duty. I was like, wow, they I could probably last you. I pulled out a couple twenties. <laughs> He's like, no, no, you're not even close. But uh, yeah, they they get into it for sure. Yeah. Well, let me you know segue into something. Sport I know a little bit more about soccer and MLS's back tournament. Let's talk about that a bit. Yeah, it's been uh, we were watching some games uh, with Chris Ritter. Yep, he was really into it. My uh, my uncle, yep. my unofficial uncle, my dad's friend, Chris Ritter. Uh, yeah, just it's it's been exciting. My really? team got knocked out. NYCFC. Uh, yeah, NYC by Portland Timbers, I yeah. believe. Shout out, shout out to Maxi Morales. Shout out to Maxi Morales. Morales. Like, yeah, I don't know if you guys follow the MLS. There's a guy on NYC FC, mm-hmm. literally five foot two. If I would say five foot two. Yeah. yeah, he's like the Muggsy Bogues of MLS. Short, but, man, but believe guys. us though, believe us when we tell you he is an all star. Yeah, he was great, great he's player. The all, I think not the all time assist leader, but last year's uh, assist leader with twenty assists. Yeah. Very he's, good, a little uh, Argentinian guy. Ah, uh, a little mini guy. I'd be scared that I'd kick him instead of the ball. I mean, he's down <laughs> there so low. But uh, yeah, yeah. no, he's he's a great player. But that's yeah. been fun, you know, the knockout stage. I went mm-hmm. down to the final four, right? Final four, I believe, yeah. or yeah, something like that. But a uh, big upset actually happened. LAFC, who's a great team, they had the uh, the MVP uh, Carlos Vela, yeah. Mexican guy. They got knocked out by Orlando City, the home team. Home team, they got a home, this guy, home uh, crowd advantage. Home crowd advantage. There. This guy yeah. Nani, this Portuguese guy for them, was he was doing work. Their team is not that good, so it was a it was a big upset for them. They're very happy, and uh, it's it's all good. And right, they're, but they're doing it kind of like the NCAA basketball, where it's you know yeah, they are. it was uh, you know, 16, 8. They're not. And and winner, they're all winner takes all, it's all knockout games. I mm-hmm. love it. It's been fun. We watched uh, we, we watched NYC FC play in the sixteen that put them to the eight. Mm-hmm. That was on Maxi. Uh, we uh, beat Toronto. Goal. Toronto FC. I watched most yeah. of it. Then I went to bed. Oh, I got tired. I had, I had Old guy. Bed. It was it was some of the games are actually really late into the yeah. night. Start you know start at twelve or something. Yeah. But yeah, very fun to watch. They have these uh, breaks every I believe it's every uh, 
25 minutes to have a water break or water break. hydration break, something yeah. like that. Take their temperature to make sure they don't have COVID. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. But uh, I think that's all the topics we got today. How so you feel? Good. Feel good. Hopefully uh, next week we're going to stay on top of it and uh, get some more, get some more news, get another uh, weekly upload. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, comment down what you felt about this. If we made you mad with our hockey knowledge or if you know. Lack, lack of. Lack of or <laughs> lack thereof. We're but, trying, we're trying, we're learning. Yeah, we're slowly learning. So we'll see y'all later. Peace out. Social distance. Oh man, it got me.